<laughs> I love nice people. Nice people are great. Listen, I have two okay. I have two Canadian jokes. Ready? Um uh knock knock. Who's there? Sorry. That's the whole joke. That's just it. Um, ready? How do you get um 25 drunk Canadians out of a swimming pool? You say, excuse me, could you guys get out of that swimming pool, please? <laughs> <laughs> that's it those are my two canadian jokes um so well, yeah big show wow sorry those are those two canadian things i say out loud oh uh, you know. i don't know any canadian jokes not a, not a one so uh, so that's it you get nothing from me today on canadian jokes i have no, no canadian material jokes. of any kind no Hey, Carrie O'Shea Gorgon, we have Kelly Dean Allen, uh, and uh, I'm Christopher Edward Brogan, and then we have <laughs> Kristen Nargalsius Craft. Um, it's going to be a really good show today. I don't know Kristen's middle or maiden name, so no. I got nothing. That's probably gotta, good. She's good at protecting her information. We got a show today, don't we? Oh, now look at, I, I just noticed something. Uh, do we, before or after the, before or after, do you think? What do you think? I think before. You do? Did you mm -hmm. load that? card because i sure didn't oh um, so then after <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is how we make the backpack show <laughs> welcome to the backpack show everybody where we bring you insights from unusual places to help you succeed It's doing the thing where I don't hear the song, though, which is, I don't know why it does it sometimes. Well, I don't know, but I'm going to do this. Happy birthday, Chloe. Happy Forbes birthday, Chloe. So excited. And Chloe is here. So happy birthday. I hope you're doing something amazing. Oh, to celebrate. me too. Besides Eat. hanging out with us. And eating something that you shouldn't. Yeah. Um, listen, I just have to make a really important, incredible uh, announcement about the backpack show. We're not doing that for all of you. So don't even think that like, that was like, we just like Chloe that much. I don't so, feel like you have to say that because that implies like we don't like everyone else as much. And we do. No, I think that's the implication. Like that's not even an implication. That's a fact. Oh, we love Bob loves when we crack each other up. I, I laugh when Chris interrupts me and it happens so frequently. I guess it's good that that's my reaction. Hi, coach. <laughs> Could be the opposite. Mom says Yahoo. I know, right? I could be actually mad, but I am not because sometimes I I think every time he's gonna let me say something and then he doesn't, and I don't know why I fall for it every single time. Because you're that's Charlie Brown. I, that's the part hey, I don't get. You're Charlie Which Brown. Makes that's me why. Lucy. But I am Lucy. Oh, am I the Lucy? So we've of got all guitar. The... We've got video. We have all kinds of fun, exciting things today. It's perfect for Friday, in my opinion. We're going to learn the things. Oh, I, look, you know, Alex wants to know what we're using for streaming. Oh, oh, oh. do you have that card ready? Because I'm about to you open up my beauty. share tab. Sure. Alex, we're sponsored by StreamYard, where you can make an incredible show just like this. Go to cbrogan.me slash StreamYard. Make your own show. It is amazing, quick, easy, and you can't believe how easy it is to get it done. Look mm -mm -mm. at all the juicy things we can do. Yeah. Speaking of juicy color. things, I want to show you a juicy thing. Let me get into this here. Hang on a minute. Let's do it. No. Ooh. Oh my god, I'm so far from this. I'm going to get murdered by the... Wow. Yeah, I could play the solo and never get hit by YouTube for copyright strike. They wouldn't recognize they, they it. wouldn't know. <laughs> well, you thought that's low. <laughs> so that is our first guest shredding it up. That is uh, Kelly Dean Allen. And we're going to drag Kelly in here to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Look who's trying Chip to get like, the copyright Stop strike. it. <laughs> yep. That was You're a lot done. of seconds. There to get. That's funny. They could take my monetization away, but I've got yeah. Kelly Dean Allen here. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good. I got copyright nailed for that one, actually. Did you really? I did, yeah. Oh, Warner wow. Brothers, man. <laughs> Warner Brothers, it's no joke. They'll sue you for anything. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I get copyright claimed a lot because uh, I use a lot of backing tracks and whatnot. So uh, what they do is they claim my video so I can't make any money off of it. 
And uh, some of them are cool about it. I've only gotten blocked once, and that was Ozzy Osbourne. But uh, I get yeah. claimed a lot. So they'll basically claim my video as theirs, and uh, they'll put ads on it and make all the money from it. So, not, you know, it's not a lot of money. I'm not a huge channel. But, so. All right, but I don't get that, because legally you can cover any song you want. You just have to, like, register it as a cover. Like, you could do the whole song, register it as a cover, and then put up just the solo, and then that would legitimately be yours. Like, they would get a cut or whatever somehow, some way, but it wouldn't be your problem. Uh, I don't really know how it works. The, the whole system is rather broken, actually. There's a lot of videos on YouTube talking about the copyright system and YouTube and whatnot. So, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'm such a small channel right now. I've got like, I'm closing in on 10,000 subscribers, but, uh, you know, I don't have to worry about that too much. And, uh, you know, copyright strikes and whatnot. But uh, some of them are cool. Some of them will share the revenue. And, you know, to me, it's it's like three, four, five dollars a month. So it's not a whole lot, but... Uh, per video, you know, it adds up over time, but uh, you know, I'm still, I, I don't make a whole lot of money from but it. But you're so. doing the work. Somebody wanted to see our sponsor info again, cbrogan.me slash StreamYard. Now that we've talked, we've covered copyright strikes is the very first thing we <laughs> yes. asked. Hey, this is Kelly Dean Allen, who one Hi. day decided, I think I will use Guitar World Magazine's list of top 100 best guitar solos, rock guitar solos, and I want to just figure them all out. And you are all the way down to, you have your last out of 100. You've done 99 out of 100. I've got one uh, left. One left, which is Stairway to Heaven. But before we get to Stairway to Heaven, which we're not going to, you know, it's not like we're debuting it today. Um, <laughs> that's a pretty interesting idea. But before that, were you, did you fancy yourself a solo guy? Like, what was your did skill level? Did you play level? guitar at all? <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> I would never be able to play through this list if I didn't play guitar at all. Uh, I started when I was about 13 and oh, wow. uh, I, I became obsessed with the guitar as a teenager. And I put in my 10,000 hours plus. Uh, I would practice uh, from age 17 to 20. I would practice uh, anywhere from 10 to 14 hours a day. And, uh, and so I, I considered myself back in the 80s a pretty good guitar player and I wanted to make it big in the music scene. And I tried for 10 years playing in bands all across the country in Canada. And uh, it didn't happen for me. Life, different things, you know, got in the way. And, and by the time I was 28 years old, I said, okay, I've had enough. It looks like I'm not gonna make it. And uh, so I quit guitar altogether. And uh, I didn't pick it up again until I was 53 and I'm, I'm now 56. And uh, my, my teenage daughter started showing interest. My 13-year-old daughter started showing interest in guitar. So I started teaching her, giving her two lessons a week. And uh, in the process, over the next couple of months, I fell in love with the guitar all over again, and uh, which is something I never thought would happen. And uh, so I, I wanted to challenge myself to uh, a couple of difficult guitar pieces. So I, I took on Eruption. That was the first thing. That was kind of a a tribute to my daughter because Van Halen was her favorite band and that's the kind of stuff she wanted to learn. And uh, so then I, I took on Cliffs of Dover by Eric, uh, guitar player uh, Eric Johnson from Texas, which is one of the most difficult uh, electric guitar pieces one can play. It's and then I took on Tender Surrender by Steve Vai. And, uh, you know, I was looking for uh, pieces as difficult as I could find because I considered myself back in the 80s a pretty good guitar player who just didn't make it. And, uh, you know, I put in the time and I felt I, I had the talent to make it, but I didn't. And, and you know, 99% of us don't make it in the industry uh, for different reasons. Well, it depends how you define it, make it also, you know. What's that? It depends how you define make it also. Like my guitar instructor had... Um, commented to me that he's been playing consistently, you know, for years, gigging with the biggest names in the business, but he lives here, he does his gigs and he goes home and that's like how he likes He's a it. working band guy, basically. Right, like right. a working yeah. musician. Yeah, I did so. it for 10 years playing, you know, I, I didn't work from the age of 18 to 28. All I did was playing bands and, uh, you know, traveling across the country. I almost made it at one point with a band I was with in Toronto. Uh, we were getting some interest from record labels and whatnot, and we were playing all the biggest clubs in Toronto and, and surrounding areas. But, uh, you know, different things broke it up, women and drugs and all that stuff that normally breaks up a rock and roll band. And uh, so that didn't happen. And uh, so that was, the, that was the final nail to me. You know, I came back to, to uh, Halifax, my home in Nova Scotia, played in some club bands around here, then finally hung it up and said enough. 
And uh, so anyway, at the end, you know, when I retook up the guitar again and, uh, you know, I learned a couple of really difficult guitar pieces. It took me a few months to get myself back up to speed. Then I thought, what next? You know, uh, I want, and, and I'm, I'm just doing this for my own pleasure and my own challenge. You know, I'm, I'm not looking to get back in a band again and start playing the clubs. It's just, I'm a bedroom player now, I suppose. <laughs> That's and, inconvenient. Uh, you're like, I want to go to sleep, honey. And you're like, no, I'm a yeah. shred. Well, it's amazing technology these days. You can do it all through headphones and a computer. Yeah, with iRig and stuff. You can, yeah, you can, yeah. Chloe wants to know fun. if the time you took away helped you in some ways. Uh, probably not. Here. Probably not. Uh, I'd probably be a much better guitar player now if I if I uh, didn't stop for 25 years. But, uh, you know, it took a few months to get back up to speed. And uh, I learned those couple of challenging pieces. And then I thought, what's next? And then I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to play through the top 100 greatest guitar solos of all time. I don't know how long it's going to take me. And maybe I'll put it on Reddit, you know? And, and that's what I did. And then it started taking off from the very first one I did, which was Wanted, Dead or Alive by Richie Sambora and Bon Jovi sitting at number 100. Uh, I put it on Reddit and it, it took off immediately in, in the guitar subreddit. And uh, and then I kept doing it, uh, you know, and at first I was just like, you know, I, I'd learn it kind of, yeah, yeah, it's all right, you know, and then I'd post it. And uh, as I went along, I became more and more obsessed with it, obsessed with tone, obsessed with getting it perfectly correctly. And so the first 25 or 30 or some of them are, are you know, yeah, it's all right. I'll, it's good enough, you know, but uh, as I went along, good enough stopped being good enough until uh, I was kind of perfecting them. And uh, and then they started taking more time to learn and taking more time to, to video edit and whatnot. And Right. Because now you're not, you're not making sure you're striking the notes. You're making sure you're like getting the harmonic just so, and then I'm you are trying to basically recreate the solo instead yeah. of just play it, you know, so. And these are, you know, it's funny twice now in this conversation for non-musical people, uh, you've, you've surprised me um, we, just a tiny bit before backstage and Carrie Yates when I talk about backstage, um, we talked about, you said my Sharona and I, I went through that whole song in my head like that is not, that is not, oh, oh yeah, that's a pretty good solo. Like yeah, an amazing guitar solo in it. And when you said wanted dead or alive, I was like, Pfft. Richie said Bora. And then I went, whoa, that is a really good solo too. Like you have to think through sometimes. Some of these really amazing guitar solos are hidden away. Well, They're the thing about my Corona is they cut the guitar solo out of the radio edit. Oh, that makes oh. sense. So most people who heard my Sharona have not heard the guitar solo. Because mm -hmm. uh, they don't have the album. Yeah. Yeah. The question from YouTube. Do you like most of these solos? What's that? How, do you like most of these? I like solos? Mo uh, well, I, I I've uh I consider this list with a hundred, it's Guitar World Magazine, who the editors made this list. I consider it personally about 75% correct. So that saying that there, there's about 25 solos I would remove and replace with something else. So, you know, there's Cinnamon Girl by Neil Young is one note, you know, and, and while it's interesting and it's iconic and it's a famous solo for being one note, uh, you know, my, my wife could play it and she doesn't even play guitar. So uh, as I could play it, <clears throat> that sneaks in there uh, as an iconic guitar solo, but, uh, there's, there's really no talent to it. You know, Neil Young himself says, yeah, but every one of those notes are different. And I think that's Neil just being, just being Neil, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, it's one note basically. So one what note other what other hidden gems are there, Kelly? I think that's what Chris was getting at. It's like, what other guitar solos are there that you Would love? we not immediately think are amazing? Mm -hmm. Blue Sky by the Allman Brothers Band and uh, Dwayne Allman and Dickie Betts. Uh, this is a band that I was never really a fan of and guitar players that I never really listened to when I was, uh, you know, uh, fomenting my, my, my uh, abilities. And uh, just during this, uh, this project, I've discovered Dickie Betts and Dwayne Allman. And now I am in love with their playing, both of them. And the solo to Blue Sky is just amazing. And I did that one sometime last year. It was, uh, it's three and a half minutes long. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was really hard to remember the whole thing. And I did it all in one take. And uh, that is one of my favorite solos from this list. Another one is uh, by a fellow named Steve Hunter, who was the uh, lead guitar player for Alice Cooper and Lou Reed. And so the solo, there's an intro solo from Lou Reed's rock and roll animal album uh, from uh, Sweet Jane. It's three and a half minutes long as well. 
And that is just a, a hidden gem of a guitar solo. And it's one of my most popular videos. And uh, it's got, so, I don't know, 30, 30 or 40,000 views on it. And, and for a Lou Reed guitar solo, that's pretty good, I right. think. And good. Uh, I've also done a tutorial for it, which is quite popular. It's the only tutorial for it on YouTube. But, wow. uh, you know, those are two that really stand out to me, even though they're not fast shredder type stuff. Though I, I, one more I have to include is Cortez the Killer by uh, Neil Young. Now that is a guitar solo. And again, mm -hmm. not a fast shredder type guitar solo, but another one that I really fell in love with. And uh, so if you're going to compare Cinnamon Girl, if you're going to compare Neil Young's guitar soloing, you take Cinnamon Girl, which is one note, and it's iconic, and it's very cool, and it's you know it's a, it was a neat idea. And then you take Cortez the Killer, which is another three and a half, four minute long guitar solo, like Blue Sky and like uh, Sweet Jane. That's an amazing solo as well. So but we and have I've covered to, all three of those so far. We have to correct something though, Kelly, because Katrina is saying it's because Neil has Canadian ears and Canadians hear better than Americans, but you're Canadian, Neil, yes? Neil Young has very good ears, yes. What about your yeah, ears? So Kelly is from Cape Breton living in Halifax right now, Katrina. Original, yes. So. so his ears should be operational is what you're saying, fully yeah, operational. Yes. And, and, and Katrina, a uh, little backstage moment when he said something, he popped out with, he's Canadian. And I was like, it's every single person in the country. Everyone in Canada We're is required Canada. to point out the Canadian artists. So I feel like we've just covered Chaz's question about what should be on the list. Yeah. Well, my next, my next honorable mention, I've done 10 honorable mentions. And uh, I can't remember them all right now, but one of them was my Sharona by The Knack. Another was Shine On You Crazy Diamond uh, by Pink Floyd. Another was uh, La Villa Strangiato by Rush and Alex Lifeson. Uh, another one was uh, Uli John Roth with uh, Sales of Sharon, Power Slave by Iron Maiden. Uh, oh, nice. uh, uh, Still Got the Blues by Gary Moore. None of those were on the list. And Gary Moore is one of my favorite guitar players of all time. He's not on the list at all. And he's one of the greatest guitar players who's ever lived and most versatile. But my last and most important uh, uh, honorable mention is by Marty Friedman and Megadeth with probably what is generally considered the greatest heavy metal solo of all time from their song Tornado of Souls. And it's not on the list at all. So it's my number one honorable mention. And that's coming up next week. So. Have you tried to play any Derek Trucks slide? I haven't. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I've never played slide before in my life until I started doing this, and uh, I, I bumped into Sharp Dressed Man uh, by ZZ Top at number 44 or 45, and I didn't even realize it was a slide solo until the week that I had to learn it. I'm like, that's a slide solo. I don't even know how to play <laughs> slide. So I, I did a crash course, uh, taught myself how to play slide within a week. And uh, the, the good thing is Sharp Dress Man's pretty much a beginner slide solo. So I could get through it and I learned it pretty quick. And, uh, but then uh, in uh, a, a couple of months ago, I did Layla by uh, Derek and the Dominoes and Dwayne Almond. And that's a good four minute long slide solo. And that's a little bit of a higher level uh, of slide. And uh, so that one needed some more practice to get my slide playing up to a, a higher level. And uh, so I tackled that one. I think I played it pretty well, considering I'm not a slide player. And uh, but Derek Trucks, he's at he's up here as far as slide players go. There's nobody better. And uh, I'm an amateur slide player, so I have not tackled Derek Trucks yet. But I, I plan on it. Uh, but slide is not something that I'm really interested in. So uh, to get to that level, to be able to play Derek Trucks. Uh, I'd have to put in a lot of time to slide and it, it's just not a, a discipline that I'm willing to put in countless hours to get good at because it, it just doesn't really interest me a whole lot. So Kelly pointed out earlier that he's a Redditor and you can tell he's not a tweeter. So Kelly, I have a question that you have to try to put into 140 characters or less. Yes. How long does it take to learn a solo? That's what Coach Scott Witter wants to know. I've, uh, for the first uh, 70 solos or so of this list, none took me longer than a week. Uh, wow. The one that I thought might take me longer was Maggot Brain by Eddie Hazel and Funkadelic. It's, uh, it's 10 minutes long. And uh, I thought, okay, that is going to take me longer than a week. But uh, I listened to it uh, probably about 300 times over the course of two months leading up to it because I knew I needed to remember it. So technically it's not really difficult. It's just long and there's a lot to remember. There's a lot of effects and whatnot. 
So when it came time to actually sit down and learn it, I had it so ingrained and memorized in my head that it, it only took me a week to learn it because uh, even as long as it is, I had memorized it. Uh, but uh, I finally came across one that took me about uh, took me about a month, and that was Black Star by uh, Swedish guitar player Ingve Malmsteen. Ingve J Malmsteen. J Malmsteen. That took me about <laughs> a month to six weeks to learn because it's very very technical. It's about uh, you know as far as technical technical guitar playing, it doesn't get any harder than this. It's probably the hardest thing I've had to learn on this list and it's it's like a four or five minute long instrumental of just lightning fast playing and uh you know i'm amazed sometimes that these 56 year old fingers can still move that fast because you know when he put this down he was a 22 year old uh phenom uh full of fire you know and i'm, I'm a 56 year old man full of ice cream you know so <laughs> <laughs> well that, that's your note on the way out kelly dean yeah, Allen. Yeah. um i'm gonna run you by a few things uh you absolutely don't use twitter uh i'm gonna touch the buttons for a minute carrie because joel says by the way the franchise king joel labava i'm um, such a fan of great guitarists i love amazing souls thanks for introducing me to kelly i just checked out comfortably numb chills man and thanks. then joel said maggot brain cleveland played it every saturday night late on ww wmms so there's a lot of stuff here yeah. uh thank you so much for swinging in and giving us all this you know information that was super useful and people are losing their minds all right you're going backstage right. stick around we have a panel coming up at the end uh we got to do a little bit of people love some sponsor love uh, do. yeah I gotta love some <laughs> need some speedos and a ferrari <laughs> for that one yeah <laughs> that's a good one so many oh questions. My gosh. People could just talk to you all day, Kelly. And you never know. Like, that's always the thing about the backpack show. You never know what's going to click with people. You never know what's not. Every time I think a show is going to do badly, it's everyone else's favorite show. It's I don't know what delight. you're talking about. I never go into a show thinking it's going to go badly. I do. I don't book people I'm not interested in. So. I do. I make faces at the guests. I think, I mm, you better deliver. I love so. them all. So Bob Collins says a week and all those years of practice. Let's not forget. So true. Yeah. Of course, I'm, I'm still thinking you got like a real understanding family because you're like, I'm just going to disappear into the garage for like the whole well, week, pretty much. You know, so. there's other hobbies you could have. You could be, you know, building monster trucks or something. Yeah, hey, look, I mean, I we got to roll. We got to roll. It's it's time here. 22 past the hour. See Brogan me dot stream yard. Get some. Buy this damn software. Michael Doherty, buy this software. See Brogan dot me slash stream yard. <laughs> it's really, it's so good, good though. It's a, it makes it work. Carrie introduced me to it. This show we is crap before that. Sponsor. Yeah. It's the worst. You know who else is a sponsor? Pubsite. Pubsite. Yep. Pub-site.com for eight thousand dollars, an author can make a site just Will like you this. Stop you know? it. Oh, it's probably a lot more than eight thousand. I'm so sorry. It's not. It's a fourteen day free trial, and it's nineteen ninety nine a month afterwards. Huh. And it's a super easy to use website builder for authors. And if you don't want to build your own website, they will do it for you. Pub-site.com. Powered hey, by FSB Associates, the best FSB book Associates. promotion people around. Carl Weaver, stick around, by the way. There's still always a second guest on our show. Uh, so, yeah, pub-site.com. This is the thing, right? Like, you can make your own website, you authors. It's also who sponsors Person of the Day. Um, and we have to think about that. And, you know, Person of the Day is a very important and, and yet. garnered uh, role here. So, stick around, Carl. Um, all right. So, we're we love the facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> oh every now and again i do i do watch some replays and go oh <laughs> that was a moment oh i felt so, like that was they were talking about me i guess they could be talking about you i, God, oh, I just think i i generate your facial expressions i can't and, you do inspire that very bad choices you know That's i make true. a lot of bad choices all <laughs> right we got to bring in Kristen. so yes let's do it she's here she's ready she's i don't touch that button animalsy um, <laughs> hi Kristen. hi Chris Kraft. how are you I'm good. Thanks for having me, Chris and Carrie. Excited to be here. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Now I could buy a pony. Um, Evidently, we both make faces, Chris and I apologize in advance wholeheartedly for whatever. Of I'm going to have to step up my facial uh, expression game in that case. <laughs> Your face is perfect. When Carrie so talked to me about introducing you, she just said you're really great at video. And then I said, where does yeah. she work? And like that answer changed like three times in a reasonable amount of time. So I want to start Yay, there with that. COVID. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, for about 20 years, um, I've been building a career in tech and in software, um, specifically in startups. Um, and as anyone who's ever worked in a startup knows, like things in startups are just 
crazy and chaotic all the time and changing all the time. Um, but it's a pretty great way to um, figure out what you need in your metaphorical backpack to succeed because you're always trying new things, always trying new strategies, always learning about a lot about yourself and about how to succeed within an organization. So I loved the the theme of um, of the show in particular. Thank you. So I followed your work. I first interviewed you a few years ago about video because like Chris has been saying for years, people need to be using video. There's really no excuse why they aren't. Um, I mean, they have lots of excuses, but none of them apply. You are chock full of tips for using video really effectively for content. But what are some of the things that people aren't doing that would be easy enough to do that would pay big dividends for them? Like in sure. Um, you know, I, I think that when it comes to video specifically, um, just doing it is is the first step. I think that so many people... Um, whether it's for a professional purpose or because of a passion they have or just for fun or like, man, yeah, I'd love to create a video to do that. Or I'd love to share my knowledge on X, Y, and Z, but I just don't know how to get started. And I think what's amazing about this moment in the world right now, two things really, is that um, first of all, all of us have, um, you know, display a lot of forgiveness when it comes to video that's still a little bit rough around the edges. Um, all of us are very accustomed to seeing webcam video or iPhone video, not to mention the fact that um, the hardware is becoming really good. So, you know, the kind of video you can capture on an iPhone is pretty darn amazing. Um, but the second thing, of course, is that while all of us are home right now and working from home and doing everything from home, um, we are all using video for everything. And so not only has um, people's forgiveness for video that's a little rougher around the edges increased, um, but I think also our appetite for video content has increased. Um, oh, that's interesting. You don't think people are sick of it? <laughs> I mean, no they probably video. are, but I also think it's like our only and I do a video to show. other people into the outside world. So like, you know, maybe people are getting sick of it, but also what are your other options, really? How come I just really? made a big report about that that said, you know, video has gone up insanely much and and it's and yeah. they were surprised. My my kind of extrapolation from that information was if you think about it, if you're exposed because of things like Zoom rooms and all that kind of crud all day, what you least want to do, it's it turns out, is uh, then get off of the the, the drip and, and touch a textual thing. Like you're just like, Ugh, I'll just watch the video. It's weird. I know. Sometimes I feel sheepish about the fact that my kids are going from 100% virtual learning and then like immediately over to Netflix, Netflix when their school day ends. But, um, you know, if they're in that rhythm. They're accustomed to it. I'm like, comfortable with it, Kristen. I don't know. Chloe says you have a very fun website. And yes. Keith, so this is very clever. So Clever Oliveira says startups Thank are you. about building and rebuilding backpacks. Totally agree. That's such a great sentiment. Hey, Todd. Todd. Yeah. Kleber's from Brazil, by the way. He's down in Brazil. He's done some really good work with a lot of different companies, but it's um, video definitely makes a big change in it, which is like uh, Carrie mentioned, I think one of your earlier companies was Wistia. Was that right? Or yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. And I mean, I think that um, video is, of course, very powerful because it's a way to give people insights kind of behind the scenes and let folks see who you are, let people see the folks behind a product, um, but to take, to zoom out a little bit more in general um, and sort of bring things full circle back to animals where I am right now, um, you know, I would say that like, this is the power of content generally and writing and sharing great content. Um, and I think the kinds of content that we expect to see and that we are hungry for, um, you know, as a society has changed over time. I think business writing in particular used to be very formal. You know, everybody thought that like whatever you published on your website had to look like a McKinsey report or something. But people don't want that anymore. You know, if, if we are going to the Internet, first and foremost, to learn things, um, to discover how to do things or get ideas for something we want to accomplish. Um, we don't want somebody to tell us this in a very dry, teacherly McKinsey report type way. We want somebody who's gonna sound like a friend, who's gonna say like, okay, great, like here's how you do this, X, Y, Z. I'm gonna help you figure it out. I'm right here, I think you can do this. And I think that's what makes excellent content on the internet. Again, regardless of whether it's- like Chris. <laughs> regardless of whether it's video content or written content. Um, I think that that's like the tone. Sorry, so say that again? Joel says I have to motivate myself to do video, even though I'm very comfortable in front of a camera. So tips for motivating yourself to start creating some content here. 
Yeah, um, I, that's such a great question, Joel. Um, my stance and, and what I've observed in working with a ton of different companies as they're creating great video content, written content, is that the as much as you can reduce your barrier to entry, um, you will be more inclined and motivated to do it. So, you know, if you have you know, already set up either a video studio or even a very like ad hoc video studio where you have decent lighting and a decent backdrop, you will you will find it so much easier to sit down and just try to knock out a video. And then similarly, you know, if you are trying to create written content, um, if you have a designated space where things are quiet and you know you have lighting that helps you focus and concentrate, um, you will probably find it much easier to sit down and and write great content. Do you, uh, with regards to that specific detail, and, and again, we're talking a lot of video, we're pushing a lot of video. I have a lot of people that will you know push back, but the only reason they're pushing back is they're they're too ugly, too fat, too old, too something. Like they believe something about themselves that there's no way they could get a video. Uh, and so they're like, so that's why I write long form. Uh, how do you get over that argument? Um, I think too, you know, there's part of me that um, wants to help people get over that argument and part of me that wants to say like, great, then do what fits. But um, getting over that, I think a lot of those things are alibis. Um, I think it's just, it it feels very, one feels vulnerable in front of a camera. One feels vulnerable being in front of a camera and then putting it out in the world. Um, and, and you know, we've all seen how mean the internet can get. Like, it's a scary thing to put yourself I'm out there. I'm responsible for it sometimes, Chris. Yeah, like, I mean, all of us are. And I think it's, it's tough. And I think it's ultimately, like, people have their alibis. But, you know, there are many extremely ugly or not well-spoken people who have been successful like on camera and on video um so <laughs> no, way, no way well i'm well spoken but yeah so but no. i also think like if that's not your jam like don't try to be who you aren't like do what feels right um and there are many reasons why video might not be the best fit like it is a little bit harder for um, people with certain kinds of disabilities um like you can get around that a little bit with transcripts but um you know i think i think all kinds of content are are right um it depends on like what feels right to you and perhaps more importantly what feels right to your audience you also get better at it like even what kelly was saying he didn't you know pick up a guitar and instantly have those top 100 guitar solos down like he had to practice yeah. and start not from scratch but start over again yeah or like previous guest jake thompson told us you have to compete every day this is one of his t-shirts the something to prove t-shirt from That's his company day. name it's everything yeah yeah so just um, get a little bit better than the last time you did it and you know you'll find that it feels good to succeed at it. Yeah, agreed. I wasn't looking to do a video show and Chris was like, oh, hey, pff, you're on. You're in a video show. I was like, the what? <laughs> when Here we you are. are. When you when you work do the work through animals and all that, it may or may not be different. But even when you're kind of advising a friend, as we all are want to do, uh, how do you get them started beyond the just press record kind of a thing? What's your What's your sort of next layer in... Or, 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 or sort of like, what's your, so they've done it a few times. Now, how do you make it look too tidy? Um, great question. I'm going to um, back up a step and answer a question that you started to ask okay. um, about like, how do you, how do you equip people with everything they need to do this? Because this is something that we think a lot about at Animals. Um, so at Animals, we are a content agency that helps other companies write and publish amazing content on their blogs and websites. Um, and I think the same holds true again, like so often um, we think of video as this like unique unicorn in its own special bucket, but really like it is just a different flavor of content, um, you know, that that matches up well with written content. Um, so part of the process that we use at Animals for every kind of content um, is starting with the goal. And I think like so often you see people who are newer bloggers or newer startups or newer to video, like kind of foc focusing just on like video as an end in itself rather than a means to an end. Um, and whether it's written content or video content, um, it should always be thought of as a means to an end. So, you know, what is it that you are trying to educate your audience about? 
Um, what are the goals that you have set for your company or your podcast or what have you um, for 2020? And how does this unique piece of content, again, whether written or video, serve that goal? Like that's how we work with all of our customers. So, you know, if um, Zendesk comes to us and says like, hey, we have these very specific business goals, we start with those goals first and then think about how different kinds of content can can help them achieve those goals rather than starting with like, okay, we made this content, like now what's it doing for us? Gotcha. That is, uh, it's interesting to go through that process though and, and sort of walk through when you hear all that. I was, I was sort of trying to process it all because I was thinking, you know, where we start, where we get to, and then where we finally start figuring out we can, we can accomplish. There's a lot of, there's a lot of steps in that journey, I guess. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think that's a great point, Chris, because um, going into it with the awareness that there are a lot of steps in the journey um, can help all of us be a little more forgiving with ourselves um, and, and recognize that like those first few videos or those first few blog posts like might feel a little bit hard. Um, but the only way and I'm sure you two do it yourselves as well, like, as you're going back and looking at past episodes, um, you might notice something in the background, um, you know, of your studio space and be like, Oh, man, like that kind of looks weird. Like that's a little distracting. Or maybe somebody comments on like, hey, that Kermit's so awesome. And you, you know, decide to keep it or decide to inject even more like, I don't know, fun, um, you know, personality into what is there in your space. Um, but I think we only are able to get to that point where we can reflect and improve um, if we have just, you know, if we have tried, um, which is why I think like getting over those alibis and that anxiety of putting yourself out there um, is truly the most important step. And just like that phrase, skate fast over thin ice, like just do it, skate fast, make a video, put it out there, recognize that it might suck, um, get feedback from the people you trust from your loved ones, and then make a better one next time. Debbie says it's like me having a green screen versus an awesome background. So Debbie, one day I couldn't be in here to do the show because there were workmen in here. So I actually took a picture of my awesome background, got a green screen and used it and made it made it work across the way. We're going to bring a, a thing. Uh, we're going to bring <laughs> Kelly back in. We'll just grab Todd really quick because he said I've used Facebook lives to practice and I just didn't tell many people I was doing it. It worked. I got more comfortable. It's definitely a great way to practice. For sure. Speaking of practice, Kelly Dean Allen rejoins us on the panel. Hey buddy. I, oh, my camera's uh, there we go. You did it. You're a pro. Oh, he's Look ready to you. play. Well, no, oh. I just <laughs> he, he just he's just practicing. He's doing something to keep his hands busy. Like yeah. Not very warmed up. Yeah. So I have a, a question for the both of you, which is, and, and it'll kind of relate very specifically to Kelly because this sure isn't what he started doing in his universe. I mean, being in a band, you, you, you know that you have to be on a stage. You have to know that like there's, you know, public attention and all that. Yes. But it's, it's not, I think sometimes people think that the people like all the four of us who get on screen are here because we like the attention or we like to be on screen or that we're like seeking that kind of adulation um starting with kelly what was the you know what what, what were your early experiences with like having to be on a camera uh terrible nervous uh, i i uh you know when i first started making videos like i said it, it wasn't to have a youtube channel uh, that wasn't the goal at all it was just uh you know i just wanted to share what i was doing in my project with other guitar heads and, uh, and then it kind of took off. And uh, so when I first started the project, which I've been at now for two and a half years, um, I didn't talk and I didn't want to talk. I'd play the solo and that's all. So my videos were sometimes like 30 seconds long. And then people on Reddit wanted me to start, you, you know, talking a little bit more. Say, why, why don't you say something about the solo? And I really didn't want to do that. I didn't want to get into, uh, you know, talking because that made me nervous. And, uh, but then I started and once I started, I got more comfortable and uh, now it's one of the highlights. I, I love writing up the script of what I'm gonna say and it's all part of the process. And now my videos are all like 16 to 20 minutes long and, and 13, 14 minutes of that is me talking. And people keep saying how much they love, they love the content of, of, uh, of things I'm saying in my little rock and roll history lessons uh, just as much as the solos and uh, you know people say I, I have the voice for it so you know for narrating and whatnot so you know this deep kind of voice so 
so people like to hear me talk and uh, I've gotten more comfortable with it. And uh, so now, you know, it's a, it's a part of the video making process that I actually love. So cool. Music, please, says Fazia. <laughs> well, there was a little little dip in there. Um, what do you think of that, Kristen? What's What was your sort of early experiences with being on the screen versus not so much? So the first time I was roped into being on camera in a video at Wistia, and I had done like a lot of like acting and singing growing up. So I, you know, that in some ways it didn't intimidate me, but um, video is a totally different ball game as anybody who has tried it knows. Um, and <laughs> the first time I did this, um, our like video expert at Wistia showed me the video and I discovered that I have a slow blink on camera. So I was like <laughs> blinking awkwardly slow. I'd be like, oh, and it just looked like I was like, I don't even know it. I, I looked like a- Is that like a send help signal? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know what prompted it. Like it was so weird. And for the first few times I was dragged onto camera, I felt so awkward about it because I'd see these videos afterwards. And I'm like, this is really weird. Like, why do I do this? Is this as noticeable to everybody else you, as it is to yeah, me? Yeah, were you like, Did, thanks for telling me not. Well, like Chris at, um, at Wistia, like he, I think noticed it as well. Um, and like we worked on it a little bit together, and you know, so again, like, back, it was so awkward. But I, I mean, play I back at twice the speed, and you blink normal. But I think like the only way to get over that kind of thing, or anything really, because all of us do weird things on camera, is to just do it. And I'm a big fan of getting in reps. Um, I talk about this a lot, as you know, I manage a pretty massive team at Animals, and I I talk about this a lot, um, and have with past teams as well. That you just have to get in reps as you're as you're getting good at something and there's no, like literally there are no shortcuts to getting in reps just as if you're trying to like you know work out and achieve some new like fitness goal there's no shortcut like you just have to put in the reps um and you know that's part of the fun if you're not interested in that like maybe you're not pursuing the right goal but I, I do um, wish people the would say off. something though like if you make a stupid face all the time not that you do but like I used to I would <laughs> like my, my eyebrows would creep up and I would look at the things like the lesson videos when they came back and I'm like why did none of you just tell me <laughs> yeah <laughs> not Everybody. one of you <laughs> People new to video also smack their lips a lot. They're like, <laughs> and so, like, it, it is a very common thing. Like that's um, that's like like that. My hands, my hands are constantly going. And <laughs> something I've got to stop doing. No, your mine, hands are going on the guitar. Mine is that I rub my nose a lot because I'm so worried a booger has come out. <laughs> so I look like a coke head the whole time I make videos because of like, <laughs> you know, and it, like I, I, I have... <laughs> These these are uh, Buddhist prayer beads, and you just use them to you know manage and count your breaths. There's 108, and I just sit off screen with these so that I don't touch the buttons and make wow. Carrie mad at me, and I also so I mad. don't touch my nose. So Chris, you now picks. know that Carrie is going to have to troll you next April Fool's Day by being like, "Oh, Chris, you have it's a on your nose," <laughs> you know, make it really paranoid. The the worst. Hey, and good timing because now we talk about part of the day, which is sponsored by FSB Associates. Incredible site for authors, pub dash site.com. You are now person of the day, but who who will it be? <gasps> the franchise king himself, Joel Labava. I'm such a fan of great guitarists, and I love amazing solos. Thanks for introducing me to Kelly. Wow! No explanation, no exclamation point though. Just wow, because he's not a marketer. <laughs> uh, just checked out comfortably numb chills, man. Hey, listen, thank you, Joel. Now you can have an apple just like that one in the picture. All you got to do is go buy one, and you'll have one. It'll Todd so says he's great. always rubbing his nose and forehead too. It's like that scene in Better Off Dead when John Cusack and the other actress like are both thinking they have something wrong with their face because the other one like just goes like that one. Oh, right. One starts the, the cascade. Scene. Yeah. And then it's all downhill from there. Thanks, Bob. You are a liar, Bob. You know, and uh, Chaz says people like hand gestures. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to do gestures. By the way, you learn once you start using cameras, you learn the frame of your camera so that you <laughs> point and do because otherwise your gestures are like this. Oh, and you go out of yeah. Well, mm -hmm. So anyway, I just want to share this. So the very last Thanks. question we have on this show, the backpack show, is what goes in your backpack? Now this backpack is on the graphic physical, but it can be also metaphorical. So it could be practice, it could be determination, it could be all kinds of different things. The answer must be very brief. I'm looking at one person, but only one person from Canada. Uh, very brief answer. What goes in your backpack? So um, uh, go ahead, Kelly. Obsession, I guess, and determination. Uh, you know, this this project that I've taken on has taken two and a half years. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I was determined right from, from the, I'd never had a doubt that I was going to finish it. 
And uh, no matter how hard some of the guitar solos were beyond my abilities, I'm like, well, I'll just get better. That's all, you know, if I can't play it, uh, I'll just get better. And if I can't do certain techniques within that guitar solo, uh, well, I'll just learn them. You know, there was, there was no stopping me. And uh, I was, I was determined and, uh, uh, you know, and I have a bit of, and there I am touching my nose. And, uh, you know, <laughs> no, I, I have, have a do bit it. of a, a, a obsessive personality. And, uh, and for once in my life, the, you know, that obsessive, uh, addictive personality, uh, there are times in my life where it uh, led me down bad paths. And uh, now it's leading me down a good path. And so right. I replaced some of the things that I was addicted with in life, like alcohol was one of them, uh, with my guitar. And uh, now I've got a productive uh, addiction and, uh, you know, and, and a productive obsession when, when sometimes in, in my past life, uh, they weren't so productive. But uh, so that's what's in my backpack, uh, determination and obsession, I guess. So do you count your year so, uh, sober? Do you, do you know what your count is? For? Oh, yeah. Four and a half years. That's awesome. Good for yeah. you. Good Thanks. for you. All right, Kristen, what is in your backpack physically or metaphorically that people for the next five years? Okay, um, so I'm looking at this through the lens of business and career. Um, and I think the common backpack item for me um, is a partnership mindset. And I think this is super important when it comes to the team with which you work, um, as well as customers, you know, other external parties. But I think like also, the more I think about it, like this probably applies to my marriage, this probably applies to my parenting style. Um, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, approaching everything as though, you know, you're sitting on the same side of the table. Um, so if you're working with an employee who's underperforming, being able to say like, okay, let's look at this together and figure out maybe where you feel like you're doing well and where there's room for improvement. And then let's figure out how we can help you let your strengths shine even brighter and how you can start, um, you know, rounding out some of those flat sides that might exist. Um, and similarly, you know, if you're working with customers, I think about this a lot at Animals when we're working with folks to build out their, their blogs and whatnot. Um, you know, how can we put ourselves on the same side of the table? Um, how can we, to my earlier point, how can we help them identify what their goals are um, and look at this as a, a partner with them of like, okay, great, like here are the goals. Let's, let's explore a little bit more about the different ways we can get there. Okay, now let's prioritize how we wanna do this. Um, and, you know, I think like it almost goes without saying, of course, that you want a, you know, partnership mentality with your spouse or your partner. Um, but I think like, you know, I, I catch myself sometimes like approaching something almost as, you know, oh, you could have done this differently when instead it's like, oh, let's, let's, let's talk through how this went or like how we might do this differently in the future. I think that kind of framing um, both verbally and like internally in my own mind makes all the difference in the world. Kelly, congrats. Chloe says, congratulations on the four years of sobriety. Thank you. Thanks. And a couple of people say productive obsession would make a good song title. Productive obsession. Yes. Could be the next new song. Joel says that sobriety rocks. Joel's also looking to get in touch with you a little later, Kelly. I'd say maybe Joel leave a comment on his YouTube and he'll yeah. find it there. You know, some people are still. My, my email address is in my, uh, in my about, my YouTube about. Cool. And uh, you can drop me an email if you like. Something I just wanted to show you that I've had kicking around. Uh, this is 30, uh, oh, 30 plus years ago. And uh, this is back in my playing days. And it's actually kind of funny. So I just wanted to share it with you. Oh, Look. <laughs> Look at the yeah. hair, the 80s hair. Little baby That's Van Halen crazy. there. That's uh -huh. impressive. Yeah. So, you know, that that time frame is that was sort of my musical time frame. So you I travel with a Frenchie as well, Chris. So, yep. So, you know, I all I can say about that is that, you know, you know, who else was a massive fan of David Lee Roth and Van Halen was not my grandmother. Ryan, we're ending the show, baby. You came late. You got to come back later. All right. You know, my uh, biggest fan of David Lee Roth happens to be watching this show right now. It was my mom. And I'll tell you a story about why my mom and I went to the same David Lee Roth concert in Augusta.